Hi everyone and welcome to the Chocolate Kitchen. So I know on our website we have a whole list of the processes we do, but to see it in person is a little different, so I was going to take out a quick tour to show you how we actually make the chocolate. So this is the Chocolate Kitchen, right here, this is where it all happens. The beans come up into here as beans and they leave as chocolate. So I'll show you this step-by-step -step process. So you come over here, the first step is roasting. We're roasting beans right now, this is a drum roaster. Turning in there, get nice even roast to the beans. And then once this roast is done, we put it right here on this cooling rack to cool down. Now this is part of a custom roast profile we do. For every different bean, you have a different roast profile. And that makes sure we get the right flavors out that we want from that bean. I'm not sure where I'm looking here. This is good. <laughs> Alright, so next step, once those beans are cooled, is they get winnowed. That means the shells have to come off. We can learn about more about website if you look at the um, our process section right below I think in this video. So this is the winnower, the beans go on the top, they get crushed, and then the shells get vacuumed up because the shells are lighter than the nibs. And the nibs go right down here into this container. If you can see them, there they are. So those nibs are what become chocolate. And that's what happens next. They go into these big grinders. These are called melangers. They do a couple different things. They refine, they reduce the particle size, and they also punch, which is reducing. I'm sorry it's so loud here, but we're making chocolate, it's very loud. Um, they are um, punching is the second part of what they do, which is getting rid of different things we don't want to have in the chocolate. Alcohols, acids, it's volatizing off, it's aerating it. And that's creating different flavors. So just like with the roast profile, we have a different con profile for every different bean. And I should have put on a glove before I started, so I'll do one now. But I want to show you inside this inside this grinder here. That's what cocoa liquor looks like. This is what we use to make our cocoa butter. I'm going to show you that process next. This could also become chocolate if we added sugar and our own cocoa butter. This would become chocolate. And this process goes on for quite some time, depending on the bean, it can be four to seven days. And that's to develop the flavors. And the last, well not quite the last, but the almost last step of the process is pressing the cocoa butter. That's what this machine right here is. So this is the actual press. This is where the cocoa butter goes, you just saw, in this big pot. And then, under really high pressure, the cocoa butter is pressed out, and then we use that back in our chocolate. So right now we're pressing Osotivite butter. This butter will go into our Osotivite chocolate. And then, again, the almost last step is tempering. This is creating certain crystals in the cocoa butter. This is going to be So if you're just doing the molding right now, you can learn a lot more about conching on our website, and tempering on our website and conching. Um, but this is creating certain crystals in the chocolate to make it stable so that the melting point of the bar is a little bit higher, gives that nice snap, and the cocoa butter won't separate from the cocoa solids and give you a fat balloon. So that's what she's doing right now. We want to take a look at the actual process. There it is. And they get vibrating. And then spread the chocolate out of the middle. And then it goes into the next room for the final step, which is cooling the bars down to be demolded. So we're coming here to our room, our chilling room, and this is the chiller. Hello. <laughs> and this is where the bars go to get cooled down. And see right here, and this is high airflow, and we set a certain temperature. You want the bars to cool down evenly. That's really important. You don't want any demolding marks. And then once they're cooled, they come out, and they get put on these trays right here. And this is a finished chocolate bar. And we put them in these racks over here to store them um, to get wrapped, which happens downstairs. So that's the process. Hope that uh, makes it more clear. As always, if you ever have any questions, please feel free to email us, info at goodnowfarms.com. We're happy to answer any questions about the chocolate making process or anything about chocolate. Um, thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye. Oh, and follow us on Instagram.